I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. And welcome to the first of three videos dedicated to Mr. Will Smith and Mr. Tommy Lee Jones and their incredible adventures as Earth's secret thin black line against extraterrestrial threats. Yes, we're talking about the Men in Black movies. And we begin, being that it is a very good place for it, at the beginning. <laughs> Released in 1997, Men in Black is an adaptation of Lowell Cunningham's Malibu comic series, though the adaptation is reportedly rather loose. An unfriendly insectoid seeks war and chaos, but he didn't reckon with the Terran authorities. The first Men in Black movie holds a 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and even won an Oscar for its makeup effects. But don't worry. I don't expect to have to neuralize you after this. So prepare for an out of this world action comedy with the first in the series as we join the Men in Black. Meet James Edwards, a fit young NYPD cop. Well, fitter than most of his colleagues at any rate. Though I do mean in the sense of physically capable, not physically attractive. Not that I, well, we can discuss such things if we really must in the comments. But his quarry is more than meets the eye. And he's just caught the eye of a very special organisation. Who reveal the truth about two-bit pawnbroker Jack Jeebs. And you how much that stings? Xenobiology. Suffice it to say that most experts agree that if we ran evolution again on this planet, we would end up with radically different results. One neuralization later though, and Edwards heads to MIB HQ, where he's immediately out of his depth. <laughs> Ooh, screechy. That's the price you pay for being an iconoclast. But on Agent K's recommendation, James Edwards becomes Jay, the man in black. And just in time for the latest threat to Earth. So, precisely what is the latest threat to Earth then? Well, it's only a bug. And what is a bug? A giant cockroach-like creature with unlimited strength only matched by its inferiority complex that lives for chaos and destruction. I know a couple of cities where it might just fit right in, <laughs> but we won't go into that. Our boys go to investigate at Farmer Edgar's house, and then to the morgues. <laughs> this poor fellow was Gentle Rosenberg, an Archilean prince who kept a source of great power very close to him. A source of great power, which would be very dangerous if it fell into the wrong hands. To prevent war, the MIB must find a miniature galaxy. So yeah, that miniature galaxy? That's the source of great power that I was talking about. Subatomic energy, apparently. And where it is, is on the collar of Rosenberg's cat, Orion, who never left their master's side. But oh dear. The bug got there first! And Jay is not receptive to the mortician's hints. Which is all the distraction that Bug Boy needs. But he still needs a ship to get off this rock. Which ain't happening on Kay's watch. And Jay provides all the distraction his partner needs to put paid to this recalcitrant roach. And so the Earth is saved. But Kay wasn't just training a partner. See you around, Jay. And so our movie ends with Jay's new partner. Sadly, it didn't work out. Agent L, Laurel Weaver, preferred the life of a mortician to that of a gumshoe for extraterrestrial immigrants. Oh well. Anyway, that was Men in Black, and truthfully, 
I just have to put this one into my house of love. At 85 minutes plus credits, this movie doesn't have a lot of time for an involved story, and its plot is paper thin. But considering the chemistry of the on-screen leads, and the warmth of Tommy Lee Jones, yes, he has actual warmth here, you won't complain. And the effects? Especially the Oscar-winning decay of Vincent D'Onofrio's Edgar, who becomes steadily unrecognisable over the course of the movie, go a long way to selling the reality that aliens live and work among us just as normally as anyone else. Rick Baker's team came up with some fantastic model work as well, not least the miniature Archillion inside a jeweler's head. The two leads bounce off each other with straight-laced charm and streetwise wonder slash horror. The villain, who actually barely interacts with the heroes, all janky movement and horror as humanity destroys anything that creeps and crawls. Plus, of course, Linda Fiorentino's Dr. Weaver, whose part is a little small, but she still gets a few lines, and the chance to shine. But to me, the real standout performance, and possibly the gig that scored in Galaxy Quest, is Tony Shalhoub's Jack Jeebs. All teeth and wonky eyes, nervous sweat and half-truths, he's a standout introduction to the idea that the world isn't limited to just what we see. The flow of the movie, even at so short a runtime, and split between the procedural investigation of an unlicensed extraterrestrial and said extraterrestrial pursuing his agenda, still manages to hold the attention. But being that the plot is so thin, and the movie is so short, it falls to Originitis to fill up the runtime. As this is mostly Jay's movie, how he came to be a man in black, how his problems with authority lead him to think outside the box, and the legacy Kay leaves him in being a prominent agent in this understaffed operation. And, while it's entertaining enough, it's still an origin story. We must remember though that this is an action comedy, so is it funny? Definitely! Jeebs, Jones's deadpan, the ridiculous amounts of alien gore, and yes, just because it's not human doesn't discount it from actually being gore. But. As an adaptation of Cunningham's far more serious comics, it's about as close as Wild Wild West was to the old TV series that shared its name. Not that a great amount of people cared about that, and if they did, they're going to hate this movie. But for everyone else, put down the Neuralizer. Or if you're going to use it, convince your friends and family to see this movie again for the first time. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, Join me next week for the sequel. In the meantime, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Or if you want to be extraterrestrially awesome, check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, this is Agent FM wishing you Splendig Verthrig, folks!